In the headlines, 350 Nigerian evacuees said to arrive from Egypt. Goods worth millions, 24 shops destroyed by fire in Zamfara. Buhari launches Agenda 2050 over two years after formation. And on the foreign scene, nine dead in Serbia elementary school shooting. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I am Ayuba Ila. Thanks for joining. The details now. The Nigerians in Diaspora Commission has said that 350 stranded Nigerians fleeing the crisis in Sudan have arrived at the Aswan Airport in Egypt for airlifting to Nigeria. According to a statement by NITCOM on Wednesday, they will be airlifted by NAV, C-130 and Airpiece. It stated that 80 passengers will board the C-130 while Airpiece will airlift 274 passengers. The checking in of the evacuees has commenced following normal airport protocols and they are expected to land in Nigeria at approximately six hours from the time of departure, according to the commission. The parents of the stranded Nigerians are expected to receive them at Abuja airport alongside some government officials. Now, goods worth millions of naira were destroyed by fire at Bebeji Plaza in Gusau, the Zamfara state capital, where mobile phones and accessories are sold. Eyewitnesses said that of over 24 shops said to have been burnt down by the fire, not a single item was rescued from the affected shops at the plaza. The report. The incident, according to eyewitness account, occurred at about 8.45 p.m. Monday evening and took prompt intervention of state fire service and security agencies to put out the fire. Chairman of the National Association of GSM Sellers and Accessories, Zamfara State Chapter, Ibrahim Kadu, said they could not ascertain the cause of the fire because for the past 40 days, there has not been electricity supply in the affected plaza. He said they cannot also quantify the number of good and the monetary value of the properties lost to the inferno. But according to him, Goods worth millions of Naira have been destroyed. Ibrahim appealed to public spirited individuals and the government to come to the aid of the victims of the fire incident as many of them are youths who have now been rendered jobless as a result of the incident. Well, you can exactly say this is the cause because there was no light when the incident happened. Uh, we don't have light actually, but we suspect it was the battery that exploded. That's what we suspect. But I can assure you that millions of men have been lost. Some victims of the fire incident narrated their ordeals. This fire incident happened last night around 9 p.m. People were come to our rescue. Fortunately, uh, during the fire service, they tried their best, but they couldn't be on the fire. They were having great loss. This is a this is a calamity. In fact, this is from God. Um, Thank the, the test. This is a test from God. This is a predicament. You can't say precisely our pain. The executive director of the State Fire Service, Abdullahi Jibu, disclosed that emergency responders. The fire service and security agencies responded swiftly and put out the fire within a short time and prevented it from spreading to other buildings in the area. He said they are still working to unravel the cause of the fire incident at Bebeji Plaza in Gusau Metropolis. We have enough fire fighting vehicles and uh, not even to Gusau Metropolis where the state capital is. Uh, in other local governments, we have all of the uh, three, to four, uh, three to two firefighting trucks. I think I have this opportunity also to express my appreciation to the security agencies, my sister's security agencies, like Forney Civil Defense Army. Because during the scene of the incident, the place was highly overcrowded. So I have to look for the enforcement from them and they deployed the whole crowd and we were able to carry out the activities there very smartly. However, while efforts were being made to put out the fire, some hoodlums who wanted to take advantage of the situation to loot public property were quickly apprehended by the security personnel.
President Muhammadu Buhari has launched the Nigeria Agenda 2050 aimed at increasing real gross domestic product growth by 7% and create 165 million new jobs across the country. The launch, which comes nearly seven weeks after the Federal Executive Council approved the policy document on March 15, was conducted by the President before the commencement of the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday. In his remarks, the President Buhari asserted that the vision is a product of a dynamic knowledge-based economy to provide sustainable development by 2050. He expressed the belief that the document, which equally aims to increase per capita income of Nigeria to $33,328 per annum to be placed amongst the world's top economies by 2050, will be helpful for subsequent administration. President Buhari first inaugurated the National Steering Committee for the preparation of the Medium-Term National Development Plan 2021-2025 and Nigeria Agenda 2050 in November 2020. President-elect Bola Tinubu has arrived for Tarkot, the river state capital, ahead of the inauguration of some projects in the oil-rich state. Tinubu, who was invited at the instance of Governor Yesom Wike, was received by the governor and his entourage on Wednesday morning at the Patakot International Airport. The jet that conveyed the president-elect touched down at the airport at 10.03 a.m. on Wednesday. Wike's entourage include national and state assembly members, local government chairmen and government appointees. Supporters of the governor were also present to receive Tinubu as they were allowed into the tarmac area under strict security control. The, the Joint Task Forum of the 10th National Assembly says it has resolved to go by the decision of the majority party, the All Progressives Congress, in deciding which zones produce the speaker and the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. Chairman of the Forum, Usman Kumo, made this known in Abuja during the inauguration of the Joint Task uh, 10th Assembly in Abuja. The report. The Joint Task of the 10th House of Representatives comprises members elect from All Progressive Congress APC, People's Democratic Party, PDP, Labour Party, LP, New Nigerian People's Party, NNPP, and All Progressive Grand Alliance, APCA. Social Democratic Party, SDP, African Democratic Congress, ADC, and Young Progressive Party, YPP. Kumo, while inaugurating the executive members of the forum, gave an assurance that the All Progressive Congress will be guided by capacity, competence, experience, and other leadership qualities. It is a combination of erudite, responsible, and responsive members elect who believe in the Pan-Nigerian project that will bring ourselves together to ensure the right thing is done. And we usher in credible, responsible, capable presiding officers to lead the Cairns National Assembly and observe the parliamentary best practices in the world. Secretary Forum, a member elect Ali Umadaki, assured the public that the tent house will not be a rubber stamp one has they will be productive. Anywhere you go in the world, the party that has the majority produces who will be the presiding officer. We, for somebody like me who is part of the op opposition, I want to assure Nigerians that uh, there will be productive and robust opposition in the National Assembly. In another development, the People's Democratic Party PDP Acting Chairman, Ambassador Lia Damagun, has taxed the PDP members elect to the House of Representatives on the need to give the right opposition so as to put the ruling party on its toes and ensure that the right things are done in the country. Damagun gave the charge at the meeting with the leadership of the party ahead of the June 13th inauguration of the National Assembly noting that Nigerians are looking up to the 10th National Assembly to correct the wrongs experienced in the country in the past eight years. I don't expect any PDP member to be less in terms of that argument and uh, capacity. Uh, we've always been known 
uh, to be full of capacity in terms of what we want to achieve. Earlier, the convener of the meeting, Honorable Frederick Abadi, says the aim of the meeting for members elect to meet with the acting national chairman and the national working committee of the party to interact as well as get guidance and direction ahead of the June 13th inauguration. We are still joining on towards the 13th of June. And we believe that it's important we call ourselves together, also invite our chairman and members of the working committee to come and tete and tete with us, guide us, advise us, direct us where necessary. The meeting is to ensure that the right thing is done by the opposition parties in the 10th House of Representatives. Meanwhile, new members-elect from the opposition parties called Greater Majority have resolved to field candidates for the position of Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the incoming 10th National Assembly. The opposition members disclosed the decision in a communique after their meeting at Transcorp Hilton Hotel Abuja on Tuesday night. The communique signed by the convener Fred Agbedi and Secretary Efosa Imashio and the co-signed by 18 others said an 11-member committee is set up to shop for the right candidates. Members were drawn from the main opposition People's Democratic Party, SDP, the NNPP, YPP, ABGA and the Labour Party. The Presidential Election Petitions Court has fixed Monday, May 8 for the hearing of the petitions challenging the declaration of Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress as the President-elect. According to Tinubu's legal team, Monday's hearing is a pre-hearing session. The hearing is to clarify if there are any applications before the main hearing will start. The timetable will be set for the hearing of the substantive matters. The court also stopped receiving replies from the petitioners on April 23. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, had on March 1 declared Tinubu the president-elect on the grounds that his party scored the majority of the votes cast in the polls. Officers of the FCT Police Command have been charged to be dutiful while embracing global best practices in the discharge of their duties. The newly posted Commissioner of Police for the FCT, Haruna Garba, gave the charge while resuming duty at the territory. A statement from the FCT Police Public Relations Officer, SP Josephine Ade, said that before his redeployment as the FCT Commissioner of Police, CP Haruna, was the Commissioner of Police, Yobe State Command. While addressing senior officers of the command in the maiden meeting of his administration, the CP tasked them to be dutiful and intensify their supervisory roles. He further stated that his administration will be characterized by nothing less than policing in line with global best practices, respect for the fundamental human rights, visibility policing, and a proactive approach to security challenges in the territory. You're watching the news updates on Trust TV. Coming up shortly. We'll take a look at story of a roadside motor park that runs 24-hour service. Details and more after the break.
thanks for staying. This is the news update on Trust TV. Now let's take a look at the top stories again. 350 Nigerian evacuees set to be airlifted from Egypt. Goods worth millions, 24 shops destroyed by fire in Zamfara. Now moving on, stakeholders have made case for access to health to reduce avoidable deaths in Nigeria. They argue that primary health care enables health systems to support a person's health need, from health promotion to disease prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, palliative care and more. Noel Samson reports. Health, they say, is wealth. But access to health in Nigeria could be difficult or expensive, particularly for the rural poor. The four major pillars of primary health care, they say, should be made available are community participation, appropriate technologies, and support mechanism. But the question to be asked are, what is the state of primary health care in Nigeria, its availability and how affordable it is? 80% of Nigerians are supposed to have access to primary health care, while the 15% perhaps uh, will graduate to secondary health care, and then only 5% will graduate to uh, tertiary care. Right? We are talking about complications and stuff, you know, at the tertiary level. But for us, there is PSC transformation, massive one currently ongoing. First of all is access to services, which is again an issue for everybody. And then we should be able to provide service to everybody whenever and wherever they are. It's not in the state that you would expect. Um, whenever people are ill, the first port of call for them to access healthcare should be primary healthcare. But there have been concerted efforts by the government um, to improve services in primary healthcare. I want to. There's uh, been a lot that's been tried, uh, and yet uh, some of the primary healthcare outcomes uh, we've not achieved what we'd like to achieve. And we're asking ourselves the question, what is the issue? What is going on? So structurally, I think there is some progress to be made, uh, but there are quite a lot of behavioral factors at play as well. However, strategies to be adopted to make primary health care services more friendly to people we are lighted. No community is the same in Nigeria. No state is the same in Nigeria. So we have to start with, first of all, that agree what is affordable and appropriate to the context of each setting. The responsibility of every Nigerian to ensure that uh, you support the current initiative of primary health care transformation in the country. One, demand side issues, people should demand for primary health care services. The current uh, revitalization, you know, the world development committees will be available and these are the gatekeepers will ensure functionality of these primary health care centers. Um, the financing will enable more people to have access to it in terms of their access to basic services. Um, the human resources for health, of course, is an important aspect. We need a lot of stakeholder engagement. We need to better understand what uh, services the people want and how they want it. Primary health care helps to increase access to health services, which is particularly important for isolated or deprived population groups that may not have the means to access the services otherwise. Well, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. Mile 3 Gombe is the most popular roadside motor park in the whole of the state, welcoming visitors from different parts of the country. For years, transport workers and businesses have been operating uninterrupted 24-hour services at Mile 3 Gombe providing job opportunities to many youngsters. In this report, Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail examines the economic contributions of the park to the people of Gombe State. It's midday here at the new Mile 3 Gombe, a renowned roadside motor park and business hotspot in the state capital. The roadside park is now a stopover for travelers from the northeast and other parts of the country. Yunus Sasule sells suya. He has been operating for about eight years and recorded a lot of successes thanks to the booming commercial activities here. <laughs> Mile 3 is a business hub for a lot of people. The most interesting thing is that everyone here has a job to do. 
Drivers, car wash workers and food vendors make fortunes in the 24-hour roadside motor park. For six years, this commercial driver, Babangida Usman, has been operating at the popular park. He built house from the proceed of his work. While working here, I built a house and bought a car. Many of us have achieved a lot in the driving job. I drive from Kano to Gombe and Gombe to Yola. I always stop here, even at night. I eat and spend like two hours. I enjoy the place. Mile 3 is a preferred stopover for passengers on route to Kano, Bauchi and Tarava State. Uh, so I'm very, very excited with the place and then um, I'm praying the Almighty Allah to bless those people that they are doing business here and also to bless Gombe State as well. The government they are to provide like a parking space for the motorists in order to have a place uh, to park their cars also. The new Mile 3 Traders Association facilitated the takeoff of the new motor park over a decade ago after they were asked to relocate from the old site. Alhamdulillah, Amamuna so mu up Okadamu the Ro Omo the Gomnati. Yet the ticket are the Muta Sacha. We are grateful and loyal to the said governor, but we want the market to be expanded so that buyers can have whatever they want to buy. To commuters, the new mile three Gombe is one of the best stopovers in the northeast because of the strategic position of Gombe State. Located at the center of the northeast geopolitical zone. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Gombe. President Muhammadu Buhari has approved the partial exclusion of the Minister of Finance Incorporated, Morphy, from the Treasury single account. The president conveyed the approval, conveyed the approval on Tuesday at the first governing council meeting of the ministry at the State House in Abuja. He also granted the request of the Board of the Ministry to charge management and transaction fees and the inclusion of the Minister of Power in the Governing Council. Buhari, in a statement by his spokesperson, Femi Adishino, recalled that the new Ministry of Finance Incorporated was launched on February 1, 2023 to transform it from a registry of investment records to a world-class asset and investment management company. The president stressed that Morphy must be supported to exercise its responsibility of achieving strong returns on investments while also contributing to broader economic development of the country as a government-owned investment company. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari will leave for London, United Kingdom on Wednesday to join other world leaders invited to attend the coronation of Charles III and his wife Camilla as the King and Queen Consort of the United Kingdom. The President will be accompanied by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, the National Security Advisor, Babagana Mungunu, the Director General, National Intelligence Agency, Ahmed Rufai Abubakar, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa, and other senior government officials. Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, in a statement on Wednesday said that the coronation will take place on Saturday, May 6. He said that ahead of the coronation, the Commonwealth Secretariat will take advantage of the gathering of leaders in London to host a Commonwealth Summit for Presidents and Heads of Government of Commonwealth countries on, far on Friday, May 5. The presidential spokesman uh, said that President Buhari is built to participate in the summit which will, be, which will deliberate on future of the Commonwealth and role of the youth. And on the foreign scene, at least eight students and a security guard are dead after a shooting at a school in Serbia's capital, Belgrade. Another six pupils and a teacher were injured in the attack and have been taken to hospital. Police arrested a 14-year-old student at Vladislav uh, 
Bika School in central Belgrade in connection with Wednesday morning's attack. The suspect is alleged to have used his father's gun. An investigation into the motives behind the incident is underway. Officers in helmets and bulletproof vests condoned off the area around the school shortly after 8.40 local time. Mass shootings are comparatively rare in Serbia, which has very strict gun laws, but gun ownership in the country is among the highest in Europe. Israeli forces and Palestinian armed groups in Gaza have agreed to a ceasefire after a night of Israeli airstrikes that pounded the besieged coastal enclave while rockets were launched towards Israel following the death in prison of prominent Palestinian hunger striker Kada Adnan. The reciprocal and simultaneous ceasefire went into effect at 3.30 a.m. and was brought about with efforts from Egyptian, Qatari and United Nations officials. Islamic Jihad spokesperson Tariq Selmi said that the fighting had ended by dawn on Wednesday. Hamas had engaged in talks with Egyptian, Qatari and UN officials to end Israeli aggression on Gaza the group said in a statement on Wednesday. And in sports news, Argentina captain Lionel Messi has been suspended by Paris Saint-Germain for two weeks after traveling to Saudi Arabia without the club's permission this week. The trip followed the French club's home defeat by Laurent and on, Sun on Sunday, in which Messi played the full 90 minutes. Messi will not train or play for PSG during the period of his suspension. It is understood that the 35-year-old asked permission to make the journey to carry out commercial work, but was refused. Messi, who has also been fined by the club, has a role as a tourism ambassador for Saudi Arabia. The World Cup winner's two-year contract with PSG expires this summer. And that's it for the news update, but you can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.